But my favorite one for sure is the Nickelodeon SpongeBob Jellyfish logo. Welcome home, Rep Pack. It's your boy Marcus here, and welcome to Comfort Cartoons, the channel where I collect absolutely everything from the late 90s, 2000s, and I'm also trying to create the world's biggest SpongeBob and Nickelodeon collection. And also, my dog is a very, very bad guard dog. I mean, she doesn't even bark when the mailman comes. She guards my heart. But I hope you guys are having an amazing day, and if you're not, you guys know the drill. Nickelodeon mail time camera flip. Hi, mailman! <laughs> okay, see you tomorrow. It's about to get a whole lot brighter, Rep Pack, because your boy is here, and today we are gonna be going through all of this stuff right here, and this is all stuff that has come in on fan mail. If you guys didn't see the original fan mail, it's on my other channel, ADHD's World. Be forewarned, though, this is uh, Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, that would be what, like Adult Swim a little bit? It would be a little bit more risque, so go there with caution. But I did open up all my fan mail, including anime stuff, some stuff for that channel, and not just that, a bunch of awesome Nickelodeon stuff that you guys in from Comfort Cartoons. And you guys are absolutely insane every single time. Like literally like half the fan mail was from you guys. So if you guys want to send fan mail, you guys have it already. The address is on screen. But everything we're featuring today is coming from you guys, which is absolutely awesome. And if you guys are new to this fan mail series, every single item that you guys send in will be labeled with your name on it. With either a sticker pad, if it applies to the item and it won't affect it too much, or newly tested a... Ooh. Remind you of anything, Parker? Yeah, I got that tramp stamp. <laughs> no, we actually tested this out on Parker's ears. He has six piercings on both of them. He wanted rod. But when I bought the tags for it, the actual little plastic thing is too big for that hole. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get some more of these tags, but for today, we'll have to tie this on. We'll get this going. This is only the second episode, but again, guys, if you just wanna send fan mail, I appreciate it. I love every single one of you guys so much. And if you sent fan mail, thank you so, so much. I'm gonna be saying that throughout this entire video. But if we get any of the names wrong on anything you guys send correct me in the comments down below I'll make sure that I highlight it and if you don't see like a smaller item like a letter or maybe some stickers you sent I promise you I did get it and I read it and I cherish it thank you so much but anyway without further ado let's get into all this stuff and add it to the collection okay so these first packages come from Terry and Evan Hill their names will be on screen but they're also known as the kings of the hill because they send so much awesome stuff they get a special legendary name but let's check out what they sent so we'll start off with all of the awesome pineapple stuff they sent obviously the pineapple we got in the room over here and not just that it's spongebob's house of course so we have some pineapple cups which are really really cool these won't be going in the collection but they will be going to my kitchen so thank you so much terry and evan hill just absolutely awesome we have a collection in there of cups yeah exactly so I, mean, just, I guess either way it's getting added to a collection i have a collection of everything except for the smallest one is friends that's not true at all. I have all of you guys, so thank you guys so much. Next, we have LED pineapple lights. These are super awesome, but I hope that we can actually display them, because I think it'd be kind of cool if we put them right here along this rail below the figures. And if we want to switch those lights out, we can always put these lights somewhere else. It says two batteries not included, so hopefully they don't need to be battery powered and we can like plug them in. That would be way, way easier to work with. Ah, unfortunately, the only thing is, is that you need to have like a battery to plug it in. But if it could have worked as a plug-in, I definitely would have put it up there but I don't want the batteries to run out so maybe we'll put it somewhere where it's a little bit more interactive and you can just turn it on and off and then not just that this for sure I'm gonna be using and that is the pineapple what is this a spigot yeah, that is a spigot he said in the other favorite I'll put lemonade in this Bruh. yeah it's yellow you put pineapple aid in this pineapple aid <laughs> yes it's just pineapple juice, sugar. Sure, why not? And water. I think you put water in it. I just put the pineapple font there. <laughs> there. <laughs> put pineapple font, that'd be even better. But that is not the only stuff they sent. They actually sent a SpongeBob bandana. Like I said, I want to be like the gangster of Constry, bruh. <laughs> Terrorizing Squidward all day long. Bruh, I own the Salty Splatoon. <laughs> but we have the bandana right here. Absolutely awesome. And of course, we are gonna tag that up. I, especially in this room, sweat way too much for this guy to be on me. So I'm gonna go ahead and tag it up and we'll add it to the collection. When we turn all these lights on, literally, especially on my direction, it becomes a sauna. I feel like SpongeBob and Patrick are their tanning, except for I can't dance like SpongeBob. <laughs> 
Next up, we got some Scooby snacks, which are super cool. I do actually have the big box of this in the collection already, but I do not have this little three pack, so thank you so much. This is absolutely awesome. And I just want to say that I think it's so awesome that Terry and Evan, that you guys are both, it's a father and son that watch the channels. I think that's so cool, and I only aspire to be a father just like you. That is so cool that you're able to hang out with your kid, watch awesome shows, and not just that, build stuff like this together. That is so amazing. Just to be able to do that with your son is just so cool. This is the other side right here. This is a sculpture that they made. The SpongeBob did get knocked over in shipping, unfortunately, but I'm gonna try to fix that a little bit later. But it is just so cool. They have SpongeBob's pineapple. They got the rocks right here. Just the attention to detail is so freaking cool. And then on the back, we have some more members of the team right here. And actually, it's a fun fact since we have all of them there. This is actually Tom Kenny's wife, which is just interesting because she plays Plankton's wife. But that's actually Tom Kenny's wife right here, our main man, SpongeBob. That's interesting. I didn't know that. A lot of the shows that he's in, she has a role in as well. Will you marry me? <sighs> oh, and this is a Ninja Turtle chapstick, which you guys know I don't collect a lot of Ninja Turtle stuff, but I'm of course gonna keep this, and I think it's absolutely awesome. And if we're going for the world's biggest Nickelodeon collection, it does have Nickelodeon logo on it. And then for their color, we gotta pick one of these three. I'm voting blue. I mean, honestly, they kind of themed it after SpongeBob. I gotta go probably yellow. Okay, then we'll meet in the middle with green. All right, guys, so as you can see, all of Terry and Evan's items are labeled. We got all their labels on there, and the reason why is if you guys don't know, every single item you guys send is gonna be immortalized in the collection, so wherever this collection goes, your guys' names will go as well. So if we end up making this place into some kind of, I don't know, like tourist stop or something, <laughs> your item and your name will still be on there no matter what happens. So we have them tagged on there really, really well. Thank you so much, Terry and Evan. And if you guys wanna donate anything to the collection to get your name on it, nothing in the collection ever leaves nor will it ever be sold. Again, address on screen. Let's see what else is next in fan mail. Next up, this is also from Terry and Evan Hill, and that is a Scooby-Doo, an ancient adventure V-Flash game. We have the SpongeBob one, and now we also have the Scooby-Doo one. And I just gotta get the console now. But let's go ahead and label this one up for them too, and let's see what else is next. Next up, we have the Red Eyes Bee Dragon. And this was sent over by Mr. Red Eyes Barbaric Brandon. <laughs> that is absolutely awesome. He is a legend in the community, Barbaric Brandon. He's been here for years, so thank you so much, Brandon for sending this over. Man, all we need now is a summon skull pop for Funko to release Ooh. that. And then a fusion card you're, Funko yeah, Pop. Yeah, <laughs> you're speaking my language. They can make a fusion card Funko Pop. There's two little like orange monsters just. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then boom, we put them together. We'll take down Gate Guardian. But I want to take this pop out of the box. Let's go ahead and check him out. Ooh, dude. He looks even sicker than the blue eyes does out of the box. I think that's why Summon Skull makes such a good merger too, because he's already very skellic, you know? What, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if there's like some kind of like lore to why there's a red eyes black dragon and why there's a white blue eyes dragon. But a monster like this, we gotta put inside of a cage. We gotta fight protect them. <laughs> so we're gonna put this inside of a cage right here. Boom, we got him protected. Let's add him to the Funko app and then we're gonna label him up. So we decided to go with green for Barbaric Branded and we added him into the Funko Pop at $21. Thank you so much, Brandon, for sending over the Red Eyes Black Dragon. Or we'll call him the Red Eyes Brandon Dragon from now on. Okay, so these next ones are absolutely sick and they came from Lucas Harrison. Woo! Right here, we got a Danny Phantom cut out. Yo, Lucas Harrison, he was just 14 when his parents let him send something mean. <laughs> this thing yeah. is sick, dude. We got Danny Phantom. We have an awesome Scooby-Doo art right here with so many villains. Literally, I can't even name all of those villains. There's so many awesome ones here. So as you can see, this is all Where Are You, Scooby-Doo. It has the date from when that show was airing right there at the bottom and all the villains from that series. And then next up, we have the iconic SpongeBob and Patrick from the SpongeBob movie, but I don't think this is from the movie exclusively, it's from the movie video game. That one is so awesome. Like I said, SpongeBob and Patrick, ready to go to Shell City and get Neptune's crown back. Really, it's like all this was is SpongeBob and get a job back at the Krusty Krab. Everything he does so he can keep working at the Krusty Krab. I think Patrick's goal was to, uh, to get that, that number. Oh, Mindy's? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's the only reason he tagged along. Mindy actually does make an appearance as like a background character in some of the episodes of SpongeBob. Ryan will put it up on screen. Absolutely cool little Easter egg. And I love seeing Mindy in the background in some of the later episodes. Next up, we have Dipper Pine 
designs though, and this guy would be absolutely awesome in the Cartoon Network slash Variety Room. Yeah. That would be perfect. I just absolutely love the way they made them though. They're actually really nice quality. And of course we have Tough Puppy, AKA Jerry Trainer, which I just always mention that because I think it's so crazy because like a lot of people, you know, we all grew up watching iCarly, but you wouldn't think that like he, I mean, it only makes sense. Like Crazy Steve should be a character. I was about to say like uh, uh, iCarly, you know, the OGs remember Crazy Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that is them and of course we're gonna label these right now. Okay, so here we go. We got Lucas Harrison. All of these are labeled with his name on it and permanently in the collection. Thank you so, so much, Lucas, for sending this over. Another item that was sent by Lucas Harrison is the Scooby-Doo Ghost Town CD-ROM game. You guys know I'm trying to collect all the Scooby-Doo media, and this is another one towards that goal. But there it is, labeled Lucas Harrison. Thank you so much. Okay, this next thing actually didn't come with a name on it, but as you can tell, it's Gengar. Pull that, Parker. <laughs> He's licking Parker's knee. It's just so moist. Well, yeah, because your knees are dry as hell. Dream Eater! Woo! <laughs> this thing is so cool, though. It is Gengar's mouth, but the tongue is actually a blanket. You able to roll that up for me? I folded it up. But wow. you roll the whole thing up and then he's a whole plushie again. It's so cool. I love it so much. So thank you so much. Whoever sent this in, it is absolutely awesome. And if that person wants to clarify in the comments down below, I'll be sure to highlight it. If you guys aren't already, make sure you guys go follow me on Whatnot. You get $10 off your first purchase. Free money, as I always say. And if that's not enough freeness, we're going to also be giving away all three of these pops right here. The entire Team 7, Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura signed and encapsulated by PSA. And that giveaway is going to be done at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on August 19th. Don't miss it. And if you're there early, you might even have an opportunity to win Mr. Sponge Robert here. The original one from my collection I've had for years. And it's just a special gift for the Comfort Cartoons community. Anyway, on with the videos. Okay, so these next ones are wood crafted pieces. And they came from at Aardvark with the saw. That person's name is on screen right now. And it's actually a she. In the original video, I said he, but it was actually a she. So I apologize for that. And thank you so much for sending these in. She made these absolutely amazing figures of Gary and also Spongebob. They are so perfect though and so well made. They have a nice finish on them. They feel really nice in the hand too. I just appreciate it so much and thank you. But my favorite one for sure is the Nickelodeon Spongebob Jellyfish logo. I mean we have it right there dude. That's pretty like verbatim. Thank you so much for making this. This is so perfect and is definitely going to be hung up in the room. This thing looks dang near close to official so thank you so much much. I absolutely adore it. It'll be in the collection always. All right, so that one is labeled and she already kind of helped us out with labeling these ones. So thank you so much, Art Bark with the Saw. Like I said, I'm going to adore these and you're going to see us hang up this one. But I'm going to adore these always. Thank you so much. Okay, so this next package came from a person named Little Looney. They did not have a name on the package, and I didn't see a name in the letter. If you're a Little Looney and you can somehow prove it to me, leave it in the comments down below, and we can even change out your labels. But for right now, we're gonna put Little Looney on it. But thank you so, so much, because this is absolutely insane. These are a bunch of Nick magazines. Very, very soon on this channel, we're gonna be taking out my entire Nickelodeon magazine collection. I've actually found my old Nickelodeon magazine collection, so we're gonna be able to check them out for one and not just that we're gonna be encapsulating them because I think what I want to do is I think I want to go for a complete Nickelodeon magazine set. Oh I could have told you that. I didn't know I'd ever have that endeavor but now I think I do. That is gonna be very very difficult but hey man I got I got time. But this person has helped me out so much on that endeavor right here. We got Nick Magazine Pop Star, which I did not have. We got this one, which is the beauty. I just love, love, love the Nickelodeon Magazine covers. It's when magazines knew they were on their way out and it was their final stand. Yeah, they're like, we could do six stuff. Yes, they did the, their best. This one has got to be my favorite. I just love everything Halloween themed, especially when it incorporates something that I love, like SpongeBob, because it's not really like scary. It's just kind of spooky inspired. We got Patrick right here as the Frankenstein and we will be going oh we got some amazing comics that are exclusively in the Nick books as well which is another reason why I want to collect them all because there's exclusive content. The next we have the a beautiful Thanksgiving cover and then Christmas. But dude I was doing some research and thank you so so much little loony. This is absolutely awesome. The person said that they found all these magazines in their closet and they just sent them over but this right here is actually the last Nickelodeon magazine they ever made and goes for like 50 to 100 bucks. I'm only mentioning the value because it would be kind of a hard one for us to get in terms of completing the entire Nickelodeon collection. Everything you guys send is absolutely priceless to me, but this is a huge one to check off the list, so thank you so much. 
Okay, then next up we have the Monster Halloween issue, which is really cool. It's like the secret box where they're looking inside a jack-o'-lantern. And I know you guys want to look inside of them. We're going to go through these more in depth. When we do the full Nick Magazine video, we're going to go through these and also seal these guys up. But we won't put them inside the hard protector until we do that full magazine video. Oh, look at how cute that is, man. We got Medieval Times Spongebob right here. It's time traveling special. Absolutely awesome. And then we have the Spongebob giant size comic issue, which it has the monster on the magazine he's reading, like actually attacking Squidward right here. And then we got a Toy Story book, which is for Toy Story 3, and it just has a myriad of information. I mean, it's got a comic book that basically goes through the entire movie, like in a graphic novel style, of course. Just amazing. Well, this one we probably won't be going through, but we will be going through all these Nick magazines in depth, so stick around for that. But we gotta put these guys in some protectors for at least right now, and we gotta tag them off. So thank you so much, little loony. Okay, guys, we have all of these things sealed up, as you guys can see, to protect them from moisture and also from air and like, you know, dust and stuff like that. But we'll put a harder protector on it once we go through all the magazines in the later video coming up. So make sure you subscribe. And we already labeled them all. So thank you so much, Little Looney. And again, we can always change these labels out if you can give us a name, even in the next fan mail or any other way of reaching out to me. But this is absolutely awesome. If you guys want to help me continue this Nick Magazine collection, somebody try and find me like a, like a catalog list of every single issue. And then when we do that video going through them, we'll check off which ones we have. I'm sure we're we're missing hundreds. This next one came from Michael Kohler, and I'm definitely gonna have to get a frame for this because this thing is beautiful. And he drew me as a Rugrats character, and I cannot get over how accurate that is. That, I could totally see this character, or me, just walking by in the background easily. I think what the key thing is, the eyes. The True, and they even got the little eyebrow uh, slits. Yeah, exactly, that is amazing. So thank you so much, Michael Kohler. I'm definitely gonna frame this guy up. All the artwork you guys make of me, I'm gonna hang it up in my house. And that way it's you guys sending artwork for the channel. Okay, so we got that labeled right there. Michael Kohler, thank you so much, man. Amazing artwork. Thank you so much, Michael, for the time that you took on drawing this and making this. I know that was not easy, so thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for taking your time to do that. I love it. This next is from Bonglie Mao, and I'm sorry if I got your name wrong, I tried my best, but this one is absolutely awesome. This is the Reptar from Rugrats in Paris. Awesome artwork, thank you so much. Next one came up from Southern Eastern Pickers, and it's another Nick magazine, but dude, I think this might be my favorite cover of any Nick magazine ever released, at least the ones that I've seen. Oh my goodness. Oh yes, I am sorry for the fire warnings that are going off right now. The fire department, I'm about to call them off because this is heat, dude. This is such a brilliant cover. It is a little bit uh, dirty as you guys can see here. We might be able to clean it up a little bit. And we got some ring ding down here in the corner. But I mean, thank you so much for sending this. This thing is beautiful. We got the Bull E, we got Vicky, we got the Croctopus, and then we got Cosmo Wanda, and then we got the Crimson Chin and Nega Chin as well. Absolutely awesome. Dude, Dude, there's an actual Ultra Lord comic book inside of here. That's sick. I can't wait to read that. That's what I want the Nick magazines for because there's so much content inside of the Nick magazines. Maybe one day once we finish the entire collection or as we do, we could document the Nick magazines. I know they're all on the uh, way back machine and some people have already documented the Nickelodeon magazines, but I think it'd be really cool to have a read through variation. And of course, somebody has to preserve the physical copies. Okay, so this one's labeled Southeastern Pickers. Thank you so much. We got it taped up and ready to go. Again, you'll see this one further in the Nickelodeon magazine video, but since this one came with protection, we're gonna go ahead and put it back in here for right now. Thank you again so much. All right, so these next packages came from Shanice Crouch, and she actually sent this PC game right here, which has SpongeBob Operation Krabby Patty in the Jimmy Neutron video game. So that is really, really cool because we did not have both of these games on the PC. It's another variation we can check down. Thanks to Shanice, thank you so much. And she also does custom, so she sent over these awesome custom pins. We got a Plankton one, we got a Gary one, and we got two Krabby Patty ones. And if you guys are interested, our Facebook is called Wednesday's Kitty Bling. So if you guys want to check that out on Facebook, she makes these custom mugs. She also made me this awesome SpongeBob glittered one. It's got like green and yellow glitter, which is just perfect for the SpongeBob branding. Awesome, the whole conch street. And she made Parker this one right here, which is just perfect because he loves the color green and his favorite bending ability is Earth. But that is absolutely awesome. Thank you so much, Shanice. These are lovely and the quality on them is really nice. Okay, so this one 
in the fan mail and I can't recall who sent this one, but it's a Nick Expressions card right here with Cosmo and Wanda. But we're gonna definitely be putting this all of our cards in the collection. Just thought it was really cool and I wanted to share it. This package also did not have a name on it and this is the Cartoon Network block game, completely sealed, which is absolutely awesome. I already put it in a protector because I didn't want to get damaged bringing it out here. But we can't label those ones because they don't have any names on them. And this one came from Barbaric Brandon again, and that is the Heat Ray Godzilla. Obviously, this is to represent Reptar. Let's pop this guy open. Okay, so we scanned Godzilla into the Funko app. He's in the collection, $20. Thank you so much, Barbaric Brandon. But as you can see, he actually has this awesome Heat Ray that he's blasting onto the ground or whatever else you want to put him blasting at. That is so cool. Thank you so much, Brandon. Okay, so we put him in a pop protector right there. It is labeled as well barbaric brandon thank you so much got him in the collection always gonna be here representation of reptar thank you so much okay and this one's gonna be a huge 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 add to the nickelodeon bookshelf and this package is from Derek krieger i am not 100 percent sure if the person who sent this is the same person as labeled on the box because i think the person tried to reach out to me about the book so if you sent it let me know in the comments down below and i'll make sure to highlight it but let's check it out Ah, uh, dude, you know where this artwork's from? We just saw oh this. Oh my god, that's the arcade machine. Yeah, that's the soccer arcade machine. They have this exact same SpongeBob, I'm pretty sure, on there. Yeah, and it has the crabs, jerseys, and everything. Yeah, it has plankton on the soccer ball. Yeah, this is all artwork from the SpongeBob arcade machine that we all recently saw in the arcade video where we went documenting that. So if you guys haven't seen that video, go check it out. But a lot of this artwork either came from that or that artwork came from this. Who knows what came first? This is like the the story that goes with the actual game, dude. Because there's Team Chum Bucket too. Like, that is just amazing. Dude, this is literally, I can't express that. This is like the canon book that goes with the arcade machine. That is awesome. I was gonna donate this to round one and make them put it laminated on the machine. <laughs> no, better yet, round one should donate that machine to you because we came there and it was busted. Exactly. Then we have the best bikini bottom stories ever. I think it's actually all of these books right here in the back. All of these ones? No, no, it's four of them. Four of those books put into one, which is so cool. And we do not have this in the collection at all. And right here on the back, it actually shows you the four books that are contained inside of it. That is so cool. Next up, oh, this is so thoughtful. Thank you so much. This is so cool. We got Pookie on the back right here. And then we have the Garfield A to Z by Jim Davis. This is a old book, absolutely awesome. It shows you all the different letters of the alphabet and something to go along with it. Thank you so much for sending that. I honestly, I mean, I've seen the rest of them. This is my favorite one so far. Oh, and then we have a Tiny Toons book, man. You never see Tiny Toons books. There's actually a Tiny, there's actually a Tiny Toons reboot that is coming up right now that I cannot wait to watch. But man, the illustrations in this are absolutely beautiful. And of course, this will be added to our variety room. Next up, an awesome one. We got Bark, Spike, Bark. I just am so glad we're adding so many awesome books to the collection. And this is a book obviously all about Spike and the illustrations as always with classy Shupo like it's such a, a interesting and unique art style I can never get over it it always looks beautiful especially in book form and then next up we have the behold no cavities book from Spongebob that is so awesome as well Scholastic's book thank you and then last we have the great escape that is an awesome cover right there with plankton hiding up on top of the frozen bus that is so cool and it's to celebrate the Krusty Krab's 11th anniversary oh. <laughs> those are awesome and of course, we're gonna be adding all those books to the collection. Thank you so much. Okay, so that's all the items. Stick around, we're gonna add all this stuff to the collection, but you guys know the drill. Scan it. Okay, so for Aardvark with the Saw's wooden design of the SpongeBob jellyfish, I thought it looked so good. Honestly, I wanted to put it on display. It's right next to the SDCC SpongeBob. I love it. It looks so good coming off the orange too, man. I think that's like a perfect spot, right? Oh, yeah. Because it's right here with all the SpongeBob stuff. I couldn't think of a better place. Thank you so much, Aardvark. All right, and since we have all this wood stuff already, I put SpongeBob back there. Gary's somewhere around here, but you're going to have to find him. Maybe not this direction. Maybe it's that direction. We don't know. You'll find 
it maybe one day. Okay, so the books, the Tiny Toons one is gonna go inside with the Variety Room. The Garfield book, technically it's not Nickelodeon at this time, but it is now owned by Nickelodeon, just like Big Nate. So we're gonna put this one right next to the Big Nate book as well. Next up, we got Bark Spike Bark. And right here we have our Rugrats fan book. And then we also have a Rugrats Blast Off. So we'll put both of these two together. Boom, that is an awesome combo. They're both illustrated by the same guy. That is awesome. Then we have the Soccer Superstar and the Great Escape. I can't wait to add these. This is all gonna kind of go on the same shelf because this is kind of where all these type of books are. We have a lot of the other ones over here, like Atlantis Scorpantis, A Case of a Vanishing Squirrel. And then we got the Great Escape and Soccer Superstar to add to that. Okay, and then this trade book, we're actually gonna put it over here because we have some other SpongeBob trade books for comic books. So we're gonna go ahead and add this trade book in right there as well. Man, dude, the book collection is one of those crazy things where we just keep adding and keep adding it. And like, it just so ever slowly gets bigger. One day we'll just sit down here and be like, oh wow, there's no room. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> how it's gonna go. But that's a good thing is we get more bookshelves. Okay, so for Terry and Evans tribute to Steven Hillenberg, I went ahead and put it right here in our walkway. We actually have two of Terry and Evans artworks in here now. We have this one right up here when we enter the room, you can see Steven Hillenberg's face, which is awesome. And then not just that, we got No Dupe City right here. So we got some uh, Terry and Evan uh, art show going on at the entrance. All right, guys, and the Jimmy Neutron and SpongeBob game is gonna go into our variety game collection, which is actually starting to get a little full here. As you guys know, I'm actually working on a shelf system over here for DVDs and games. So that'll be able to expand us a little bit over there. But that was an awesome one to add and two pack at that. And for our stack of Nick magazines, these are gonna go with the rest of my newly discovered Nickelodeon magazine collection. So that way we can go through them, like I said earlier in the video. All right, and for Shanice, we actually put one of your pins right here on the back of my little uh, jacket here. So if you guys send pins, maybe I'll try to find some spots for it. But I can't put too many and then it loses its function because you know, this is all about convenience and I got it. Okay, and our little bandana, in case we need to do some bikini bottom thuggery, we got it right here, back of there. Okay, and Dipper is actually down here. It's very little, but I mean, it makes sense for Little Dipper. If you guys don't know, his name is Little Dipper because he actually has birthmark on his arm that is the constellation of the Little Dipper. Okay, for the Scooby-Doo, this is all going on our Scooby-Doo media collection. As you guys see, we have several Scooby-Doo DVDs along with one game right now, but now we got a couple games in here. We got the VTech one and also the computer game. And for the Cartoon Network Block Party, we're actually gonna be putting this right here because it's actually perfect, dude, because I mean, I have a couple Cartoon Network games. We got the Operation Kids Next Door, the Hi Hi Puffy Ami Yumi, but we actually have Speedway and we have Party Block and Speedway 2-Pack and now now we actually have the block party. So that's all three of them right there together. That is absolutely insane. And right here we have all of my GBA games that are so far sealed that I've kept in the collection until we figure out this entire shelf. Honestly, I'm even thinking about falling. Honestly, I'm even thinking about completely changing this shelf out and doing something bigger and longer. Just because it's so hard to categorize everything with these borders in between it. So I'm gonna put all the games right here, including our Cartoon Network ones. That is an awesome set of games though, dude. I mean, American Dragon, and Jake Long, Mucha Lucha. I mean, do you even know what this is, Parker? It's you, Super Duper Sumos. You never watched Super Duper Sumos in your life. You don't know me. Okay, what is it about then, besides it's, Super it's, Duper Sumos? It's about uh, these guys. What are the nationalities of three main characters? I have never seen Super <laughs> Duper Sumos. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this show was on Cartoon Network, I believe, and it was only in America. I think it's a Canadian show, but we only had it in America for like one season, if that. But because I was a weirdo and I watched television on an unhealthy amount, I had seen it. All right, guys, so that is actually it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you smack that like button. Do not leave this video without hitting the like button, guys. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And also, check out this video screen right here, which is the last epic episode of Fan Mail. Once you click on that, I'll put you on a playlist of all the epic fan mail that you guys have sent for the collection. I'll see you guys over there. And as always, Rep Pack, I will see you beautiful people in the next one. Adios. Bloop.